Howdy, folks. Time is precious and oh so fleeting. Yet we have so many interesting people to meet and remarkable things to see. Join me, won't you? It's the Ultimate Cleveland Show. It starts now. Congratulations! Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. Sorry, I was just congratulating our beautiful Cleveland Metro Park system. See, Cuyahoga voters just voted yes on issue five, thereby passing the Metro Park's 10-year tax levy, which is good news because otherwise we would have had to make a lot of cutbacks around here. I'm talking about drying up a lot of these streams and rivers, probably cutting back on majestic views, and massive layoffs for woodland creatures. We couldn't keep this kind of workforce with that budget. You hear me, squirrels? You get to keep your jobs because of Cuyahoga County taxpayers. I'm just joshing, of course. You'll forgive me my japery. This park system now spans more than 25,000 acres across Northeast Ohio, and it's obviously one of our area's greatest treasures. And based on the fact that nearly 70% of voters showed their willingness to put the bill for it for another decade, it's nice to see that people don't take it for granted. Right now, I'm at the Eastern Ledge Trail, which just recently opened. It's a mile-long trail featuring a mix of paved and natural surfaces, a suspension bridge over Euclid Creek, and access to some of the most scenic vistas in the area including this new overlook that stands 130 feet over Euclid Creek, making it the highest overlook in the Metro Parks District. Hello! This whole park system is a great resource, and like many people, I leaned on it pretty heavily during the pandemic. I'm pretty sure that the visits I made to the Metro Park are the only thing that helped me maintain what's left of my sanity. Here's a segment we did way back in 2020 when we were still trying to figure out what social distancing was. We were so young. You guys are too close. Spread it apart. Yeah, I mean, can't go into the office. Had a lot of time off, so I've been coming down here to the Metro Parks pretty regularly, um, just to kind of keep an eye on things and make sure everyone is practicing proper social distancing. Good spacing. Yep, good. Nice work, everybody. Here are some tips that I read about online that you should be following uh, when you're going out and enjoying the outdoors right now. No walking in the middle of the sidewalk. Thank you for respectfully moving to that side and making six feet of room. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. No spitting. I have no real authority or anything. Uh, this is a Scoutmaster shirt that I got at a thrift store. Um, but people see it and, you know, they assume. If you want to get that outdoor exercise, but you don't want to be in a crowd, consider not going out during peak hours when everyone's out. Get up super early or go out super late, like a creep like me. Are those dogs of the same household? Well then get them away from each other. Good spacing, stay safe, no spitting. All right. Now is not the time to be looking down at your cell phone. So let's like spread that out just a little bit. Thanks a lot, just spread it out, thank you. Another day keeping everybody safe. Thank you for not trying to hug me. I know it's gotta be driving them nuts. They're like, it's that huge celebrity. And they gotta be like, oh, I just wanna go over and hug them. And they can't. And I promise, double hugs when this is over for everybody, whether you ask for it or not. <laughs> so, good spacing, I like seeing it. Nice job, ladies. Good spacing. I like seeing it. I don't get a lot of thank yous for the work I'm doing out here. Nobody's like, thanks Mike for yelling at me and keeping me safe. But I didn't get into this for the thank yous or to make friends. Um, I got into this to try and keep people safe. And uh, I do think most people are appreciative. Nice social distancing, guys. Good job. This is Mike Polk in the Metro Parks, keeping people safe. Of all aspects of the Metro Park, I've made it no secret that my favorite feature is the Cleveland Metro Park Zoo. In fact, I work the zoo beat for WKYC. What does that mean? It means anytime there's a hot zoo scoop, I cover it. And I've covered it all. Twilight at the zoo, Boo at the zoo, Zoo Lights, Asian Lantern Festival, when a baby lemur or something is born. You name the zoo story, I've been there. Because the zoo beat is my beat. <sighs> Sorry about that. I get a little territorial about my zoo beat. Sort of like a Bengal tiger gets territorial when another Bengal tiger comes into his feeding or mating grounds. Love makes us do crazy things, doesn't it? Hey, speaking of love and the zoo, take a look at this old package I did.
The most romantic night of the year is upon us, and we wanted to get you all the dish on what the hottest celebrity couples in Cleveland are doing, so we went to the Metro Park Zoo. Well, this is Mickey and Sylvia, and they are our trumpeter swan pair. In general, trumpeter swans and other swans are monogamous, and they make for life, right? Monogamy is really hot right now. There's often a lot of courtship and dating. They will sort of dance to one another okay. and present like head bobbing. Once they connect, how do they say, you're my swan moving forward? So once they find their swan, they kind of know. Yeah. You just know when you find your swan. Sounds like it should be like on a throw pillow in my <laughs> sister's room. This is a really hot zoo couple. Thank you for introducing me to them. Unlike those clingy swans, our next hot zoo couple have sort of an on again, off again situation going down. But it works for them. Explain to us yeah. a little bit about the snow leopards yeah. and what makes them such a hot zoo couple. Snow leopards are a little different. One, because they're very seasonal breeders. That means they only come together a few weeks out of the year. So they like they're cool with having like some distance between them. More of a long distance relationship. <laughs> That's right. Very and they're not all on top of each other all the time. That's yeah, cool. Distance yeah. is hot right now. Yeah. They'll do some scent marking. So scent marking sort of the foreplay. That's yes. You know? And the female really controls the situation too. She, nice. She lets the male know when she's receptive. Very progressive. So think of it like a bell curve. Right. Slow to begin, uh -huh. peak of interest, Got it. and then waning interest. All right, That's, I, I'm very familiar with that kind of relationship. <laughs> Our next hot zoo couple is less of a couple and more of a menage. But hey, I'm not here to judge. So we actually only have one male elephant. His name is Willie, and then we have four females. So we've got four girlfriends here. Good, <laughs> and they make it work. Yes, they all make it work. I would definitely say that Shenga favors Willie the most. She's the one that you'll find spending the most time around him. And he's just like, you know, I can use a little bit of me time right now yeah. sometimes. Yep. And how does he express that? Depending on where he is, sometimes he'll give her a nudge. Really? Just push her out of the way. Nice. As big as he is, um, he could definitely push him around if he wanted to. But That's... he's very gentle. So by him. elephant standards, he's actually a gentleman? He's, yes. For okay, sure. will they be mating on Valentine's Day? Um, these elephants probably will not. They will not. No. Sorry, dude. Yep. So by default, though, he, there's, there's no other male in there. Right. It's he'll, like he'll, jackpot. He'll yep. It's like if you're in an office environment and there's like somebody, you, you start finding people attractive who you right. otherwise would not. Yeah. I, I yep. understand that completely. <laughs> they are beautiful. They are all very sexy. You are one of the hottest Valentine's matches, and I'm so proud of all of you elephants. So there you have it. Those are my choices for this year's hottest celebrity zoo couples. You can check out all the glitz and glamour of their celebrity romance for yourself because the zoo is open all year long, including on Valentine's Day. On the Zoo Beat, this is Mike for 3 News. It's true, I love everything zoo-based. I always have. Need more proof? Check out this video that I made a very, very long time ago about a product that I always wanted as a child but never received. The following is a paid advertisement for Zoo Books magazine. Uh-oh, here comes the draft. Y'all know what that means. It's Zoo Books. If you get Zoo Books, y'all can learn about zebras and how they like to kick cheetahs in their heads and whatnot. That's in the Zoo Books. You also get to learn about scary lions, if they're too scary for me, so no thank you. But there's also bears in Zoo Books and parrots and other pretty jungle birds. And dinosaurs, too, because just because they're extinct don't mean they're not animals. So just call this number and we'll send you a ton of zoo books, probably more than you have room for. According to this pretty mom, old people like zoo books too because it takes their mind off death. And plus, if you order right now, we'll send you this sweet tiger poster for free. What a great way to let everybody know how much you like tigers. Plus some stickers, and here's another zoo book. It's just $14.95, which is surprisingly expensive considering it's just some zoo books, but get them anyways. This monkey looks like some kind of clown monkey. Get zoo books today. Now I'm obviously not the only one who loves our metro parks. In fact, my very talented friends Aaron and Adam created an entire YouTube show called The Good Outdoors about how much they love nature. I was recently a guest on it. Take a look at the sneak peek. Oh, Mike, it's a beautiful day. Thanks for joining me in the good outdoors. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm excited to be a part of this project with you and get it over with. <laughs> I was going to say, you're really excited to actually go birding? Yeah, I am. I'm, I'm willing to give anything a try once, and I want to be supportive of your weird things that you do, and uh, you've done a lot for me, so let's get this over with. Well, I like to start every birding session by thinking about my favorite top five birds. What are your top five? Oh man, you really put me on the spot to yeah. try and think of five birds. Well, let's go have a good time in the woods. Let's have some fun in there. All right. 
And Mike, there's three things you need for every burning trip. Right. You already got your binoculars. Thanks for the loaners. I got you some field notes with a pen. Okay. That way you can write down any birds that we see. Okay, but I don't have to do that though. No, but like, if you go home and your friends ask, we'll be able to tell them about all the great birds we saw today. Cool, but you're not gonna be checking at the end of the day. No, 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 no. Okay, great. But the third thing, and probably the most important, is a desire to learn. Hmm, okay. Well, I got two of those things. Okay. What's like a, your favorite of all the birds songs? I don't know if it's the best, but it's one of the easiest ones to remember. Okay. And I really think it's unique because it does sound like this. Mm -hmm. It's the Eastern Tohi, and it sounds like it's saying, drink your tea. Okay, I'm gonna have to hear that. So it goes, drink your tea. Oh, I'm familiar with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And once, you, once you hear that, you really you can't get that out of your head. No, 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 and you just know, you, you'll be out in the woods. Drink and your hear. tea. That's it, it's an Eastern Tohi. There is one other bird call I like a lot. We okay. won't hear it today. We probably won't even see it, but it's the barred owl. Okay, what's that one do? Well, they have a song that kind of sounds like they're saying, who cooks for you? I'm gonna have to hear and that. And go, Wow. And then, very when they get real worked up, they do what's known as caterwauling, and mm -hmm. they'll actually sound like demons or like terrifying monkeys at night. You're gonna do that they'll even They'll literally though. be like, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Mike and I's birding adventure lasted four delightful hours. We saw a bazillion birds, shared a gazillion laughs, and walked a bajillion miles. When Mike was finally ready to call it a day, we hiked back to our starting point so we could compare notes. I was happy to see that he took some, and he even wrote down his favorite bird, which was, in his words, a red one. I felt that he had shown real interest and took the experience and responsibility as a birder very seriously. So, I decided to honor him with my official Good Outdoors birding patch. And I could tell he was genuinely pleased at this. I have a feeling this isn't the last time he'll join me in this toxic dump. Until next time, I'm Adam. See you in the Good Outdoors. Haha, -ha, wasn't that fun? And that's just a tease. You should check out their whole episodes at their YouTube page right here. As we are talking about the Metro Parks, there is one place that I really wanted to congratulate as far as the strides it's made over the last 10 years or so. And so I did that just today on the wildly popular YouTube program, The Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Take a look. I wanna say thank you to the uh, voters who approved the uh, issue five tax levy to fund the Metro Parks and expand the funding for the Metro ah, Parks. I voted for that. Because they do a great job. And I wanna give a special shout out to one in particular, and that is something that deserves our praise because it's an example of something that used to be really terrible that slowly got better. And I think we kind of take it for granted because it happened so slowly right before our eyes that we didn't even notice it was happening. Do you remember Edgewater Beach Park from 2010? Mm -hmm. It's disgusting. It's filthy, syringes, diapers, all over the place. 40 bottles. It was a nightmare. <laughs> 40 bottles. I call, it was like a big urban litter box is what it was. It was gross. I once saw a mattress floating there. No joke. Twin size. Full time. There were children playing on the mattress. And the parents who were there, apparently with the children, I assume, didn't seem to mind. They were passed out. Three wine coolers in on the beach or something like that. And there were three kids who were clearly not related taking this mattress just out to sea slowly. It was that kind of a beach back then. I don't know what happened to those kids. I, I assume they drowned, probably. I don't know, though. <laughs> they I got left. to Canada in 13. Hopefully they are in Canada. Yeah. They have, you know, new caretakers and health care. But I do know this. That beach was disgusting. And now it's a lot cleaner. Here's what happened. The Metro Parks took it over. It used to be the state who was in charge of maintaining Edgewater Beach Park, and they were a bit lacking. Then the Metro Parks took on that burden um, and we, when we gave them that first tax levy 10 years ago, and they made it quite nice. Is it perfectly clean? No, it's, it's not. It actually, at least once a year, you can't swim in it because there's too much sewage, but that happens. <laughs> what are you gonna do? At least there aren't cigarettes on the ground anymore because the Metro Parks came in, took over, and took some really impressive initiatives like picking up trash, and policing the area to make sure that at least no one was being human trafficked out of the bathrooms. And those were huge steps forward. The place is beautiful, the park looks great, 
Thank you so much for continuing in the right direction, state of Ohio, in, in that case, at least as far as I'm concerned, and supporting these parks because I love our metro parks and Edgewater Beach is a lot less filthy than it used to be. Thank you. Yes, sir, I've spent my fair share of time in these metro parks of ours. Done my fair share of journalism, too. If I had to pick a favorite metro parks-based story I've ever done, I know what it would be. It's not just about a place, it's about a person, a weird person who does something weird in the metro parks. It's not gross. It sounds gross, but it's not. It's cute. Watch it. The concept of the costume superhero is nothing new, of course. But not all heroes wear capes, as they say. Some dress up like fruit. So how did we end up here? I guess uh, to truly know, we got to go back to the beginning. 1988, I was born. 2018, I ran a race in a banana costume. And we kind of went from there. By day, Matt Droll is a husband and father who works as a finance manager at a car dealership in Amherst. But this is merely an alter ego meant to conceal his true identity. My name is Matt, I'm the running banana, and I hit dingers. Those are home runs, right? I think so. Okay. If you live on the far west side of Greater Cleveland, there's an excellent chance you've noticed Matt running. He's fairly easy to spot. What made you decide to start doing this? The first race I ran, I did a half marathon. I wasn't in any shape to run it, and so I just decided, you know what, I'm going to have fun with it. Droll says he enjoys the happiness it brings people when they see him in his banana regalia. It's fun to see like the comments on Facebook of people saying, I needed that smile today, or hey, you know, it's the laugh I needed. Saw a comment on Facebook. This guy was talking about visiting his mother-in-law in a nursing home, and you know, how is it a hard time on the family and everything like that because of everything going on. And he goes, we turn around the corner and there's a guy jogging down the street in a banana costume, and everybody in the car just busts out laughing. How many banana suits do you have nowadays? 22. You have 22 banana suits. I have one for all different occasions. I put on my nice one today. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> TV banana suit on. I imagine after like a marathon or something like that, one of those has to get pretty ripe. It, it is pretty ripe, to yeah. say the least. You just throw them out, get another one off the bunch? Yeah, pretty much. I got a wardrobe in the basement that has them all hung up. Do you wear it when not running? I've swam in it before. Christmas, I did a maternity shoot in it once for me and my wife's second kid. It's gonna gloss over that. Family, you have a family. How do they get involved? Oh uh, yeah, my kids love it. They've got their own tiny banana suits. I guess I should do this. Do you have any plugs? I'm going to do the Cleveland Half Marathon at the cool. end of October. Coming around Christmas time, I've got my freestyle rap album coming out Ooh. called Banana Spits. Okay, I've got to go. I'm done here. It's going to be great. I must admit, there's something undeniably refreshing about the fact that there is no deeper meaning to Droll's endeavor. He just likes dressing up like a banana because it makes other people happy. You've made the very generous offer of loaning me one of your banana outfits that you have with you so that I can experience what you experience. Sure. And I'm going to put that on now and then, be on, and then be on TV with you doing it. It'll peel great. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> the world can seem pretty dark and overwhelming at times, and seeing a man dressed as a banana jog past you won't solve any of your problems. But it might make you smile and forget about them for just a moment. People always honking that much? Yeah. And for that, I salute you, running banana. You may not be the hero we need, but you'll do until that hero gets here.